Welcome to Life on Wheels and Tracks. In the next five minutes, I'm going to show you how to use Gaia GPS to create a route for your next ATV ride. I'm using Gaia GPS Premium, which enables additional layers compared to the free version. Watch for an upcoming video comparing free versus premium account features. For all-terrain vehicle route planning, I use two layers. Backroads Mapbook Canada is my base layer, and Satellite Topo from Gaia GPS using Mapbox and OpenStreetMap is overlaid at about 60% opacity. The backroad mapbook layer is shown as black lines for roads and trails, and the satellite topo displays roads, lakes, cut blocks, and orange topo lines that aren't to be confused with black lines for roads and trails. Zooming in, we can see numerous black lines provided by backroad mapbook, but not all are going to pan out. Logging roads in BC are designed for loggers and not for recreational users, and they usually don't connect through to other logging roads. This is where the satellite layer comes in. Granted, it may be a few years old, but the satellite image often can confirm or deny that the black backroad mapbook lines are worth exploring. It is worth noting that these black lines could be a year old, or they might be 50 plus year olds, and then they may have been deactivated or could be impassable. Another important piece of route planning data is the satellite topo, orange topo lines. Here we can see that the elevation and land contours and weather this is going to be somewhere that we can blaze a new trail or this is just going to be way too extreme a terrain. When creating routes, I use my technique called pan, scan, zoom and click. First thing, pan out, take a look around your current location to get an idea of where you want to ride. Scan the map layers for roads and trails, zoom back in, identify your route, click to create the route and repeat. Before we dive into plotting a route, Let's pan out, take a look around the large area to see some of the trails we want to incorporate. Over here, we have this great zigzag trail that's really fun when you do it as a climbing trail. And over here, there's some snowmobile trails that run along the edge of the plateau with amazing views. It's finally time to create our route, so let's click the Create Route icon. And because we're using OpenStreetMap data, we can leverage some of the advanced features like the Snap to Nearest Trailer Road, which improves the accuracy and speed we can create our route. If we click somewhere that isn't part of the trail or map data, Gaia will draw a straight line to your point. To undo it, you can either drag it to a new location or click on it and click Delete Waypoint. You can do this all the way back to where you're at a road that has map data so that you can redo your route using the intended direction. Here we're making some longer legs by clicking on other points using the OpenStreetMap data and then Gaia is filling in the blanks and picking the appropriate route. Throughout the route creation process, you'll see that I'm panning out, scanning around to see where my next segment of trail is going to be, zooming back in, and then clicking on the next point on the trail to create that route. Every once in a while, especially when using the OpenStreetMap data, Gaia will make a, an incorrect assumption of where we want to go. So we see that we just redo that segment and then click on the next section of trail and continue on creating the route. When we reach part of the trail that doesn't have the open street map data or when we're just blazing trail, we see that we have to make our own way. So here what we're going to do is we're actually going to do it in smaller steps. Now we don't have to make it 100% accurate. What you want to do is make sure that wherever you see an intersection, so as you're riding along the trail, you don't have to think about it too hard or it's clear which way you're going to go. So here, it doesn't have to follow the trail exactly. At intersections, it's more critical. But it's just to provide you a quick reference when you're riding so you can see where your next direction is. At this intersection, we're just going to continue on straight instead of taking the right. So we're just going to extend right past it to make our next waypoint. Then at this corner, we don't have any options where we can go off. So we can just quickly click our way around and continue on. We can straight line this section and straight line from here to here and then we're back to major road and we're gonna have to make a decision which way we're going. So we're gonna click and then start going along the road. Now that we've reached the end of the route, it's time to check on some settings. There's a notes field if you wanna add some notes for yourself. There's the public sharing on off toggle to keep it private or make it a public route. You can name your route and you can assign a color to it. I prefer to keep all my routes a single color because that shows up on the map as trail that I haven't yet ridden and vetted. When I'm saving my tracks, I'll use all kinds of different colors for those so I can differentiate them. But with my routes, I always use a single color so I know that if I'm following a yellow line, typically, that it's something that isn't yet proven. 
This has been a quick look at creating a route using Gaia GPS. Please comment if you have questions or share your tips and suggestions. Remember to subscribe and watch for more videos on using Gaia GPS and other navigational tools for your ATV adventures. See you on the trails.